With the RAF and the Royal Navy pinned down, Germany had successfully established a foothold in the last remaining resistance in Western Europe, Great Britain. Now, London was under siege and facing its darkest hour. Hitler was banking on the city being bombed into submission, breaking the British resolve once and for all. Dunkirk had taught the British one important lesson, never to give up in the face of the impossible. Failure to hold London would mean Britain and the war would be lost to the Germans. Lieutenant Edwards of the 7th Royal Tank Regiment, 1st Army Tank Brigade, had been assigned to stem the tide of advancing German armor. to a non-aggression pact with the Germans and America wallowing in isolationism, Edwards was left in no doubt that Britain would face this storm alone. Edwards had been ordered to halt the German advance. He was the last line of London's defense. Edward steered his tank towards the point where the German forces had been concentrating. Incoming artillery. The call broke across the radio. The British had to fall back to avoid the deadly hailstorm. Edwards watched the enemy retreat back from their defensive line and breathed a huge sigh of relief. London had been saved from the Germans for now. Best job I ever had. Hitler's assault on London had failed. What's more, the British rearguard had managed to push the German armor back into the surrounding countryside. The tables had been turned on the Third Reich. Lieutenant Edwards had been ordered to move his unit into German-held territory and recapture the RAF airfields, which were now being used by the Luftwaffe. the bridge, Edwards knew this was their chance to pay back the Germans for Dunkirk, London, and the invasion of Great Britain. While the Germans continued to operate airfields on English soil, the RAF jockeys would never gain air superiority.
Capturing the German repair facilities would mean an end to their salvage capabilities. London would continue to be bombed into submission whilst the Germans held the airfield. Edwards had to capture it. The German armor burned fiercely as Edwards surveyed the aftermath of this intense fight. The tide had finally begun to turn. The Germans had been pushed back to the landing beaches. Hitler's forces were now fighting a bitter defensive retreat. Sanctuary lay but a short distance from shore where the Kriegsmarine were waiting. The British were in the ascendancy, but could not risk letting their quarry escape to regroup another day. For Lieutenant Edwards, this would be his greatest hour, the moment that he chased the Germans into the sea. Steel and blood. Edwards knew deep down that this would be a fight with no quarter asked and none given. They still had to overcome their biggest challenge yet. Beil, of the 6th Panzer Division, one of Hitler's greatest commanders, was all that stood between success and failure. If Britain was to prevail, Edwards would have to defeat this commander. This was it, the day of reckoning had arrived. Edwards would pay the Germans back for the humiliation and suffering the British had endured at Dunkirk. Word spread that the Germans were hurriedly trying to evacuate their troops off the shore. Edwards sped onwards towards the enemy. The beachhead was in sight, and it was the Germans' last stand. The German forces were retreating. Allowing them to escape was not an option. Edwards stared at the lone German tank blocking his path. He was about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hitler's finest tank commander, Ace. Cheers reverberated around the inside of the Cromwell. The German invasion army had been finally crushed. British victory had been absolute. Hitler's war machine had been disassembled and scattered across the sands of this unassuming corner of England. 
Edwards and his crew watched as the long line of German prisoners were slowly escorted away from their defeat. Lieutenant Edwards was right. Preparations were already underway for a joint British and American force to invade northern France. Edwards and his Cromwells would soon be called upon once more to fight for a free Europe.